Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo here. Today I want to introduce to you guys a really cool malware concept referred to as alternative data streams. Now, if you don't know what alternative data streams are, it's a really um, interesting kind of area within Windows and their file system, uh, the NTFS file system. Um, and basically they try to add support for the HFS file system, a hierarchical file system, I believe. It was a file system that Apple used. And um, basically this file system had these data streams. We have a file, dot exe dot txt or whatever extension it has um, there's attributes associated um, but there's also the actual data of the file and this is how normal uh file systems kind of work right uh, of course there could be other attached information but for the most part that's kind of the look right the ntfs file system and similarly the hfs file system um they again have some sort of file dot exe dot txt dot py whatever file dot extension it is of course, it has its attributes. Its main stream of data, the actual uh, executable code of the file, but there's also alternative data streams associated with the file all under the file's name, right? So, um, of course, when you run the file, this main stream is what you see, it's what you see in the Explorer, it's when you see in the hex editor. Um, this alternative stream is pretty much hidden uh, from all typical view of the file. Um, and what we can do as, you know, malicious people, uh, hackers and penetration testers and whatever the heck, um, we can utilize these streams of data to add our own streams of data and malicious information to these streams to help us in a malware perspective. So I kind of want to introduce this concept to you guys if you're not familiar with it. It's a pretty fun and cool, cool concept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a PowerShell. Go ahead here. I'll CD into development, ADS, and boom. So I can go to the list and you guys can see I have my three files here. Now quickly take note of the file sizes, right? Uh, just kind of have a mental memory of them. Obviously uh, don't worry too much about them because they're not going to change. I just want to prove to you guys that they don't change. So you guys can get a look of the file sizes now and see how interesting alternative data streams or ADS are. I'm going to refer to it as ADS from kind of now on. Let's go ahead and make a payload. So I'll just do echo calc.exe into a uh, payload.txt file, right? And if you don't know what this does, right? We're just outputting the word calc.exe into, so this is a redirect. So we're going to redirect it into a payload.txt file. And now you'll notice if we have opened up this payload.txt file that we just created, it has calc.exe in it, right? So what's great about this is that um, we're going to be using the symbol later, but hopefully you guys can understand that we're echoing out calc.exe into the payload.txt file, right? Um, so now if I were to type the payload.txt, we can see calc.exe as an output, right? Now let's go ahead and uh, actually add this payload as a data stream to our ads.png, right? I think I need to do this within the command prompt. So I'll do cmd type payload.txt and we're gonna type it into um, ads.png and then we're going to use this colon to denote the data stream we want to save it to. And we'll just call the data stream payload. Cool. So now we've actually added the payload, the contents of payload.txt into the ADS PNG data stream referred to as payload, right? So now we can actually go ahead and delete our payload.txt, right? We don't need it anymore because, um, if I were to like DIR our directory, right, list, you guys can see this is the same file size. It did not change at all, right? Um, we can actually go ahead, open up a uh, hex editor. Oh, draw ads.png to here. And if I search for calc.exe, it won't be able to find it because calc.exe didn't get written into this file in any way, shape or form, right? This, this file does not have calc.exe embedded into it rather it has calc.exe as a stream of data tied to it right if i do drr slash r you'll actually be able to see payload right here and this is the data stream that is attached to our uh, png right in fact if you wanted to make it more covert you could actually just name it the default data stream attached to images um, but again that's a whole other rabbit hole we can go into uh, another day. You guys can see the payload is right there. We named um, ADS colon payload and there's data in this payload. So let's go ahead and kind of look at it, right? So um, 
what we can do is I'll go back into PowerShell. If we go ahead and get content of the um, ads.png, and then we attach a stream, and then we get stream payload, you guys could see we get calc.exe from that data stream, right? If we were just to do the normal get content on the ads.png, it would get all the contents out of it, right? It gets that hexy or the ASCII. Yeah, uh, Windows doesn't like when you do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it gets that uh, ASCII text, right? all this information. This is the content of the file, right? Nowhere in here does um, our data stream of the payload exist in there, right? So, I mean, if you wanted to, right, you could do like a uh, dollar sign C is equal to this content. And then we can invoke expression on that dollar sign C, whoops, dollar sign C, and it executes our calculator.exe, right? Um, which is, that's pretty interesting, right? All right, cool. So um, another thing we kind of do is if we wanted to, we can do like a notepad on the uh, ads.png. You can see we're able to open up in notepad the actual payload associated with the um, payload. So now we can actually hide data, not necessarily in a file, but in a data stream associated to that file, right? The main stream of data is what you're seeing in this hex editor right here. This is the main stream of data. But in this alternative data stream, this is where our malware is, our calc.exe, right? We can execute it through invoking, or um, we can actually put other data in there, right? Who's to say that if we can put something as simple as a calc.exe text, it's not even the actual executable, just to say we can't put other data in here. So you can see I have two other files in here. I have my graduation.mp4. Yeah, it is a meme. There's me looking, me looking snazzy. Um, it is a very, very, very crappy quality video. Um, but hopefully um, it gets the job done. And uh, we also have this main.exe. It's just a subscribe message box, right? So can we actually attach other executables into this ADS without even altering the size of the file? Because we're adding them as streams of data associated with the file, right? So let's go ahead and try it. We'll use the command prompt again. Let's go ahead and type graduation the MP4 file into the ads.png colon. And I'll just call this grad that uh, MP4 because I think Windows likes its uh, extensions. Uh, I forgot to uh, specify the uh, little arrow to redirect it. There you go. So now if we do dr slash r again, we can see a grad the MP4 in our uh, ads.png. Obviously, again, this doesn't show up if you just do your normal DIR. Um, it doesn't even show up in the file explorer. In fact, we can close our graduation. Uh, we can delete the graduation file in there. And again, it's still the same size, the 39, 3, um, 6, 3, 1, right? It doesn't grow in size at all. So now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and try to execute that file. Uh, let me just open up another uh, file explorer. Go into this PC, local disk, I think it's program files, Windows Media Player, there it is. Uh, and then WM Player, that exe. All right, I think that should, that should work. So we're going to copy this path and then we'll paste it into here. Uh, put in quotes because there are spaces in this quote, uh, these quotes. Um, but if we go back into here and we do WM Player, that exe, then we attach the path of our ADS file. So we can do quote, ADS and uh, add this extension right here and then do ads.png colon grad.mp4, then hit enter. You'll see, right, it executed the graduation mp4 file even though it doesn't even show up in the file explorer. Uh, the last one we can actually do too is the, the main.exe. So if we go ahead and type our main.exe into our ads.png colon, let's call this main.exe. So again, we can delete the main.exe dir. Again, it's just the ads.png and there's still only 39,000 bytes, right? It hasn't grown in size. All right, so let's go back into PowerShell and clear. And then we can do dot slash the ads.png colon main.exe. And you guys can see that it executed the message box as well. So yeah, that's how we can actually use uh, alternative data streams in uh, 
malware and uh, other programs like that. And again, like the the NTFS file, right, with the file dot whatever, because we're using ads.png for this example, right? The mainstream of data is the actual image, but the alternative streams that are attached to it um, are, are the malware or whatever code you want to use, right? Obviously, this goes past those executables and you know, like for the first time, we just used calc.exe as text and we were able to execute the text uh, with invoke expression. The second one, we actually just had, um, you know, we just embedded an entire uh, video, I believe. Um, and then on top of that, we also embedded an entire executable, right? Um, but this is this goes past this because now you have ways to store um, you know, key logs. Like if you were doing the key logger and you want to store the logs hidden, um, this is a great way to do it because that data stream won't show up as uh, it won't like that log won't show up in the file system. It'll be attached um, as a stream of data associated with that actual file, in this case, the ads.png. And again, you guys can still look at the hex code and see that there is no, um, you know, weird information in there uh, that is regarding to the other executable uh, media file and um, text file that we all put in to this one singular um, ads.png. So yeah, hopefully that was uh, something pretty cool and worth your, worthwhile. Yeah, thank you so much and uh, happy hacking.